Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian. And I'm Ethan. And today we've got a 75-point battle report that was a requested battle report, so we're getting through them slowly but surely. Uh, this one is between Legion of Everblight and Mercenaries. So someone requested that we play Dwarves vs. Legion. Yeah, specifically Hammer Strike. Yep. So first instinct whenever I go Hammer Strike is my boy Osram. So that's what I ended up playing this week. So I got Osram with three blasters, two gunners, and five drillers. Uh, and then my rec options are Harlow and the double artillery corp. And then I have two gunners, Bamfist, Thor, who is jack marshalling a basher. Uh, this is a variant of Osram I've been wanting to try out for a while. It just kind of leverages like wave after wave of heavies. That way you can just kind of throw them away and forget about them. So for the Legion side, there was no real specific direction for it, but I ended up picking a caster that I think they'd appreciate. So I ended up building Absalonia, Terra of Everblight, so Abbey 1. And originally I had the list in uh, Children of the Dragon because like leveraging her feet with Nephilim and the healing, or well, the healing is the feet, but whatever, the Nephilim and the unyielding with that seemed like it would be really cool. But then I just realized like, I think that, no matter what, whenever I build a list that's more like War Beast themed, uh, I would rather just go in Primal Terrors because Hellmouths do so much for a War Beast brick for uh, uh, Legion. And uh, the way I've built this list kind of goes more into it, but I have an Archangel, Proteus, and a Carnivian as my battle group. I also brought a Blight Archon that's uh, running with a Rake and a Mechano Shredder. Uh, I think the Rake is just one of the really a really good war beast for the Blight Archon, and then giving the Mechanical Shredder makes sure that she, the Blight Archon can go crazy, and then still have a bunch of Fury to re reeve back if she needs to. Otherwise, the rest of my list is uh, two Forsaken, two Spell Martyrs, the two Free Hellmouths, and then a min unit of Chosen. I think that uh, even though this is a Primal's Terror, Primal Terrors list, it doesn't really look like one, but there's real no, really no theme in Legion that gives a lot of benefit to the War Beasts outside of the Nephilim. And Unyielding when you're Arm 17 isn't really all that big of a deal when you're trying to bring things that Abby keeps around for a long time. So having the Archangel and Proteus and Carnivian, they all have a way of stacking armor between the Blight Archon, Unyielding, and Spiny Growth. The real goal for this list is just keep the beasts around to try and maximize the feat, and then just use the rest of the pieces to kind of get to where they can. Like, uh, the Chosen can go off, do their own thing with no support, and Hellmouse can just contest things for days, because that's what they do. So I won the roll to go first, and like I say, every single game I opted to go first. Uh, going into Hellmouse, like... Giving them turn two means they're up in the zones, but if they go first anyway, the tentacles are in the zone. So, like, in my mind, I know he's going to kill two of the zones, like, until turn three, if not the whole game. Because as you can see on the bottom zone, that Hellmouth is behind an obstruction, which is going to be real hard for me to get to. The top one went almost all the way to the edge of the board, just because this is a really wide scenario for Ostrom, and I put him pretty central to, like have an option of which way I want to go but it's still like it's not a scenario in hammer strike that he wants to see just because like his package has to fall around his aura so what I do with the heavies and hammer strike if you don't know I got plus two inches deployment so that's why I'm at the nine inch and then heavies and the weapon crew units get repo three so the heavies actually trample seven repo three so they move two inches farther than if they ran with their speed four I did not energize her this turn because I put up snipe and then I put up Fire for Effect, because Fire for Effect is going to be a big spell that if I can hot swap might be able to help me bring down an Archangel. It's not, unfortunately, not like usual where I'm going to be just like taking pot shots at a 120 with it for five dice damage with Siege Master. And then like just being able to chip it over the game, because I need to one round his 120. Otherwise, he's just going to feat and get it full health, because I have zero Grievous Wounds in this list. It's also worth noting that um, my driller collection was a little low. I think the rest of my drillers are unbuilt, so we have a couple stand-ins with the Avalanche, a, a, a Seether, and a Nomad. Yeah, because I didn't think to bring mine because I thought you had five. Yeah, it, it it's close, but uh, I just stopped building them after a while. The Thor Basher uh, package is going up top because I'm hoping they can maybe get to that Hellmouth that's not protected by the obstruction, and then otherwise, like... 
blasters up front. The gunners are also going towards the top zone to try and snipe out the objective. And then that's pretty much it for me. Going into turn one, the, the positioning for my Hellmouths was super intentional. Like, they're not going to be doing much against Ethan because all of his stuff is steady or sturdy, whichever one stops you from being pulled. Sturdy on the heavies. Yep. So the dragging things around isn't going to be a big deal for me. And honestly, like, as many times as I've played Legion for the years I've played Legion, the drag on the tentacle is really not all that big of a deal. It's a, it's a huge threat, right? Like, it's a massive threat. But most people know how to avoid it, and you're kind of torn. You're kind of tied to a very specific space with the Hellmouth. So the best thing for me is that these are free contesting pieces that are extremely difficult to get rid of. And since I've got them spread so far apart, Osram does not like splitting his battle group, and that means that they're going. He's going to have to pick a side, and the side that he picks to go after, I could just either try and go to collapse it or uh, just kind of stick where I'm at. I was hoping to uh, that I positioned the, the bottom Hellmouth a little bit to be able to get a tentacle into the zone so I could have both zones contested by the Hellmouth, but that didn't really work out for me. Uh, you also, proxy-wise, you can see my, my Morrowind Archon is taking the position of a Blight Archon. First, I don't have it, and second, when I do get it, I'm going to chop the crap out of it and make it look better. So, uh, in terms of upkeeps, uh, the Blight Archon did put out uh, draconic, not draconic blessing, dragon's blood on the archangel. This puts it up to arm 21 and means that it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Ethan to deal with, even if we're putting shots in with the mortars. It's going to be at least a, a little less troublesome. What I've decided to do here was just go for pot shot drifts against Harlow. He's a real big problem for me because Absalonia doesn't have the greatest protections against him. So I was really hoping to just get a really good drift onto Harlow because if I get him do some damage, light them on fire, things would be good. But unfortunately, that just doesn't come to pass. And I end up lighting a couple drillers on fire. I end up uh, repositioning back and uh, then jiggle it back forward again. I think we end up going back towards the end of this turn and fixing this so I'm not within 13 inches of a driller uh, because I just was not visualizing their threat range quite right. Otherwise, uh, Absalone goes next. She ends up dropping uh, playing God on Proteus because extending his threat range even further is great, and giving him that extra strength buff is huge too. And then we boogie over to the Carnivian side, and I put Wild Aggression on him at first. Uh, well, not at first, just it, just period. And then I camp too because I do worry about some of the long-reaching things coming into me, so I've just got some extra fury hanging out here. Otherwise, the Mechano Shredder's hanging out in the trench, hoping to not just randomly die. And then uh, my, this is where we, we tinker with the, the range I was in by just a, a tad bit, maybe a half inch. So we do repo back out of it. The Carnivian hangs out behind the wall. I don't want to get into that threat range with that either. I, I just can't lose a heavy before losing anything else. Ethan's got five heavies, and I really need to make sure, well, six heavies technically, and I just really need to make sure that I don't give him things to start the peace trade the way he wants to. You know, I got I to gotta let him come to me. Next up, I end up spreading out the Hellmouth to contest the crap out of that zone, and uh, that... Um, then pulls up uh, the Chosen. And I leave one in threat range. I figure this is just a bait play to get Ethan to come into me. So it's my turn to top two. I'm up the board. Things aren't terrible. But you're going to notice I sit here for a little while because I start to do all my power-ups. And I'm trying to picture in my mind what's my... What's my win condition this game? And I do, one fire goes out, one fire doesn't on a driller, and I believe it does. I think it did four, four damage because I cracked an 11 here. Yep, at dice minus seven. So I'm thinking, like, what is my win condition? Because in my head, it's not scenario because I'm not going to be able to pull out scenario with Hellmouths out. And I, I don't really have anything that I can reach and touch them. Harlow can shoot them with his line of sight ignoring thing at dice minus six, so it does no damage. And then, like, the Archangel can probably kill a bunch of my heavies once it gets in there. And then with feet and the plus two armor, I'm not confident I can one-round it. So I don't think attrition is the right play. And then, like, here I'm thinking, like, do I just try and kill a two-camp Abbey with Harlow? Harlow didn't move 
because I was worried about getting too close and Archangel drifting off something. So I'm not in aim range. So I'd have to walk. Needing eights. Dice minus three. Dice minus three. And I could set her on fire even because she didn't do the concealment and immunity fire ability. Yep. So I end up just feeding. And like, I'm not going to go for Abby this turn. But I need to let the game play out because I don't have... I like to have an ideal win condition like at the beginning of the game and even like after turn one like it usually like you can picture it i remember like thinking at this moment i don't know what my win condition is yeah it's it's a toughie with this list because you with this scenario you're kind of shut out and ostrom is pretty good at scenario with being able to push things around and kill things easily but with the way things are here your biggest your biggest like avenues of victory just aren't working on those sides yeah, and like normally, like I said, with swapping fire for effect on mortars, you can usually chunk 120s pretty well, but that doesn't work against you because if I like even waste the time doing chip damage, you'll feet. And then there I have a I feet, bunny goes up, sprays a tentacle, doesn't break armor. Because uh, the spray bunnies went towards like the middle and the bottom, just because I figured they'd be throwaways this game, because on two dice, they can maybe kill some tentacles. But, like, they're not going to really do much else. Dice minus 8, dice minus 9 on his heavies, or even worse. Yeah, the, the gun bunnies are really legit pieces for the rule. I think they're one of the things that really prop up the Rulik, like, branch a lot. And maybe it's just with Osram because he's the one that functions the best. But against this list, those, those gun bunnies really aren't doing a ton of work. But they're only 18 points for three of them. So, like, yeah. that's the, like, mm -hmm. they're here for infantry clearing. You didn't bring infantry, so it's not, like, a huge deal. I have chosen. Yeah, they're yeah they're totally gonna <laughs> kill chosen. So that one goes up, hits the blight archon, doesn't break armor. Next one goes cranks it, does like nine damage. Yeah, nine damage transferred off to the rake though, so that did quite a bit of work to it. Yep. Fortunately, didn't take any out take out any systems though. Yep. And here I'm talking like I need to respect the middle flag, so I just decide make fort driller, and I hope under feet if the archangel decides to come in that enough will survive where maybe I'll have two of them that at least have their fists up, and then with the fire for effect shots, I can one round it. Because if the Archangel goes down, then I'm feeling a lot better, and I can see my avenue of wind conditioning opening, because then the middle of the board opens up. Uh, fire for effect mortar. I think you take you lob one of the shot, the, the shot at the Archangel, and I took a bunch of damage, but we forgot about flying high, so I'm not 100% sure if he could have made I the shot. I would have had to move, and I think I aimed mm -hmm. instead with fire for effect. So there I'm just measuring if a, a gun bunny can get into the zone and can test just so I don't trivially throw away scenario. Cause I, and like, not be engaged. That's and not be engaged. For. And I shoot the Hellmouth, hits, dice minus six on two dice, does no damage. Yep, I got lucky there. I mean, yeah. Next one goes, same thing. We have to look it up. We're at six. I'm used to rat five heavies, so like rat six lights just like feels wrong. Yeah, it's crazy. It's always weird. The I think it isn't it the the blasters are the ones that are rat five. No, it's they're the both gunner. rat oh, six. Well, that's really nice. Uh, so I opt to put up Harlow. He's going for the mechanic shredder just to try and take away some of his utility. Yeah, the mechanic shredder gives me a lot of leverage in this game, and getting it is a really good deal for you. It's mostly like I want you to have to pay to charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's able to pop him out. Takes three shots, though, because I didn't roll that well at dice minus three. I pop the fourth one into a Forsaken back there. Kills it. I didn't do any Swift Hunter movements because, like, I didn't really want to not be tucked behind the woods anyway. And I didn't want to be so close where the Blade Archon could walk, fly over and punch me in melee and sprint away with its stupid spell. So I was trying to, like, the hug crimson this needle. Ballet. Yeah, the Crimson <laughs> Bullet. <laughs> So now the mortar's going, popping a shot into the Archangel. So it didn't aim, but it didn't move the full eight inches. Or er, speed two, plus two from the ground, speed seven, because I used siege tactics. So it did 12 damage, which is pretty respectable. So this one, I did take the shot, because I'm like, okay, I'm not putting everything into it. This is the only damage it's taken. This is my thinking, like, I've done 12. Now, does he want a feat before putting in the Archangel? Or does he want to hope that the drillers don't one round? 
the one round of damaged one. Basher goes up, fails to kill a tentacle. And now I'm just kind of moving some dudes up and getting ready for next turn for Force Barrier and Osram, camping four. So an unfortunate event, this wasn't a dead camera battery. This was the, the memory card getting corrupted while it was in the camera. So I don't know exactly what that was about. But I did take like another 20 minute turn. And this was a lot of like trying to figure out what I needed to do with everything. I did not want to give up my Archangel and I did not want to feat this turn. I wanted to try and get a little more greedy. I didn't think Ethan had enough shooting to take down the, the Archon fully. So what I ended up doing here was I don't really care too much on what's happening on the sides. My Hellmouths are just trying to choke things off. Uh, they're not doing any damage, just running to jam. And then the uh, Archangel ended up putting out some shots uh, on drillers just to get them on or to try and get some damage out he there. shot the mortar or i'm sorry yes i shot the mortar i came up shot the mortar pulled back that takes one mortar off the table that i don't have to worry about this and it was the one that had fire for effect on it so ethan's got to go recast that somewhere else now even though he's pretty close to the other one uh but then in order for me to do that and make this work i had to put up enough in the middle to make sure that the the archangel could survive and that's where the chosen come in so they just kind of ran to the center and decided to kind of body block the uh the drillers one of them charged in and didn't do any damage at all so it wasn't a huge deal i've got my carnivian waiting in the wings behind them to unpack into things also and then for that driller on the top um i think i got a little bit more concerned about it than what I really should have. I know Bamfist is over there, but he's not within range to allocate to. So I was really worried about losing Proteus this turn. But uh, I really, I, I put my Blight Archon into the, um, in, into that, into a spot where it was able to shoot at Harlow. And I took Harlow off uh, and I was happy about that. And then since I needed to get the Blight Archon into a place where I thought I needed to block the Driller off, I put Refuge on it with Absalonia. And he just, uh, the, the Blight Archon repositioned into the Driller in between Proteus, right? So Proteus had come in. I think it was Proteus that killed the killed Harlow. That's what it was. It wasn't the Blight Archon. The Blight Archon did something else that didn't matter. Like with your armor on feet, the Blight Archon really doesn't have a role other than keeping uh, Draconic Blood up or Dragon's Blood up. Otherwise, uh, Absaloni is kind of hanging out in back. She's still camping too again. Um, I had a really cool, neat play here that would have been super duper sweet and would have cost me a lot less of the positioning issues that I had come across. And it was using the Blight Shroud or Blight Bomb on the middle driller that is the Nomad right now. And if I had done that and put the Archangel into those drillers, like repositioned further into them, then it would mean that they would only get their six attacks against me. And I don't think that's anywhere near enough to kill the Archangel because I don't, and they can't walk out of the blood. Based on the four inch AOE, I don't think they could really walk out with the th way things were around them. Like if I run the blight or the, the Ogryn around to the side so they can't wrap around the Archangel, it would have made it so there just wasn't a lot they could do and would have served me pretty well. It's still six attacks that could hurt, but uh, otherwise I think I'm pretty happy with the way the positioning worked out here. It just uh, feels like I'm, it looks like I'm giving up a lot, but I think I'm just trying to keep as much of my really high value battle group on the table as I can because I want to wait until uh, the next turn defeat because I know Ethan's going to take the take the shots at the Archangel to try and drop it because I didn't feat and he's going to try and punish me for not feeding this turn and that's not because I know what's going to happen next it's just because that's the way that it works if you leave a damaged uh, Archangel out there with an Absalonia feat on deck someone's going to try and take it away from you so you basically lose your feet. Yeah, and I wasn't expecting the Archangel to come up and shoot the Mortar. Like, that was not something I anticipated. I thought for sure it would come in, try and do some damage, because it's POW 21 now. Yeah. Like, it's dice minus one on a heavy. It trivially will probably one round at least one of my heavies on, through my feet, and then maybe bang up another one. So, losing the Mortar sucks. So now I'm just trying to allocate out what I need. Your fire check did a ton of damage again. It did four again on that driller so not everything's in control like you said you can see which ones are i did keep uh within 12 of the driller that's within four of the objective for pathfinder 
But yeah, that bottom zone is pretty much dead to me because it's like I kill a tentacle with my heavy, it comes back next turn. I kill a tentacle with a heavy, it comes back next turn. And it's like it's a slow attrition grind of like, can you chew through my heavy faster than I can kill tentacles and maybe get to the hell mouth? But yeah, and all they're really wanting to do is tie you up down there. Yep. And even once I get a heavy do it, like if I hit with a four, I'm dice damage, so I'm 1d6 on the drill, and then I get a clamp attack at dice minus 2 on 1d6. So it's only going to take me minimum two turns, three if I don't roll well. I guess everything I said last turn about that driller that's across from Proteus was wrong. It looks like you must have just kept him in control because yeah, you were allocating to him. and that now, now it all makes sense. Now you see why I'm worried about Proteus. Yeah, because I made sure when Osram moved... I put down a proxy base yep. to see where that heavy had to be to keep him in control. Like, he is max 12. Uh, so I allocate uh, allocate two out there. So I have, I'm doing it right now. I give two to one of the guys, and then I give one to another. And then this is where the battery dies. Yeah, now finally the battery dies. Yeah, typical big top gaming fashion. So what happened is I did a couple allocations. I cycled fire for effect to the mortar up on top, and Ostrom had to walk behind cover because he's camping zero. Like, this is super dangerous for me, but, like, I need fire for effect on that mortar to have any chance of killing that hellmouth in the top zone, which I believe it did do this turn. Yeah, it connected. Because yep. with fire for effect and brutal damage, I'm still three dice damage, even with impervious flesh at dice minus four. So with that, it was able to rock it out, and then the bunnies went up, and they were able to kill the objective with the help of the a crushed basher, and his field marshal, or, or not field drive, marshal. yeah, his drive is repo, so he's able to walk five back and kind of tucked there by the rock. The bottom zone's just a wet noodle fight. The driller that was allocated to in the forest was able to walk up, boost the hit into the Blight Archon, and then just punch through transfers to kill the Rake and the Blight Archon. So now, like, if I can ever get to that Hellmouth, maybe I can start pushing the bottom. And I was able to get one driller on the Archangel by using the other ones to clear Chosen, and I left it on how many boxes? Four boxes. Yep. <laughs> Some of my damage rolls were really, really bad, but it was still dice minus one. Had to spend the charge and like a couple auto hitting drill attacks. I remember rolling like a four yep. or a three. And yeah, then it wasn't good. As soon as it came up short, I'm like, well, that's that sucks. Yeah, I was like a little worried that um, the driller would take it out, and then the mortar was an issue too. But then we remembered flying high, so there was no the mortar just couldn't get there, even with desperate pace. So that driller was your like last hope to get the archangel down. It just couldn't come up. Yeah, whenever you come short on a 120 on Abby One's feet or Darius' feet, like, it just, it feels bad, man. Yeah, it's like, you know, 20 minutes worth nothing. It's just like, I wasted my time. Back to my turn with the Archangel going to be fully functional this turn. So Ethan did take over the top zone and bust my Puppet Master arc er, objective before I could use it. So he goes up to two. So I'm a little bit more pushed up against the ropes in scenario right now. And I think there was an attack that you wanted to take. So we roll back the clock a little. Not the clock, but we roll it back a little bit and let you do that. I can't quite remember what it was. It was something on a chosen maybe because uh, you, did, you, did, you killed it. I toughed and then healed back. Uh, I legit don't remember. We just played this game like 30 minutes ago. Yeah, I think that's what ended up happening was you tried to take a swing on a Chosen and it toughed because it's my leader that, that was up front and he's the one that's knocked down now. So I get a tentacle back in. Uh, the, the driller on the bottom zone killed one, but only one. So now I'm able to start filling tentacles back up down there and start jamming that z that zone. So like there's like this cool like trifecta of things. Eventually he's gonna want to try and beat around that rock. So if I put more tentacles in his way, that's that's probably the best. But with Osram being so far away, there's not much he can do in terms of like getting around to uh, to the Hellmouth itself. So now I'm just trying to figure out uh, what it is I want to do here because there's a really juicy if not unlikely chance that I can just rock Osram off the table right now. 
Oh, it is worth noting Proteus frenzied because he went full last yeah, turn. Yeah, he sure did. He had one Fury left on him, and I rolled an 11. Yep. So that really... So this is, this is kind of coloring my opinion on this assassination run, at least plotting it out. So uh, the way it works is I can... If I get rid of the... The um, I almost said Slayer, even though that's not even the right Jack. If I get rid of the Driller that's in front of the Archangel, and then uh, make a land that that'll make a landing spot for the Archangel to get it within twelve of Osram. I do have the ability to get him to come in within ten inches, and that gives me my Draconic Blessing aura. So the way that I decide to unpack this is activate Absalonia first. She feats, and I get all the hit points back on. Uh, on my Archangel. I think I probably should have healed Proteus up a little bit, but I don't think he took any. I don't think I've hit him at all. Yeah, for whatever reason, I thought I did. But the big thing is the Archangel got like 40-something boxes back, and that is fun. So um, she ends up moving uh, Wild Aggression off of the Carnivian and putting wi- or putting Refuge on. This way I can go in and beat up on this Driller and then back out of the way so that the Archangel can go up and have a landing spot because uh, the the, ne- the threading the needle for that 120 base is a little bit tough between the flag and the position of the Chosen and the Carnivian and the Driller. So I just need to get everything kind of out of the way here. Now my Carnivian is doing his best to roll average but just isn't really quite getting there. He's hitting on fours but he's only doing a couple damage here and there because he's uh, sitting at, like, dice minus two on this for most of the attacks, or dice minus one with the the bite. Uh, So we do end up getting it, and it does take him his full stack to do it, which is really unfortunate, Um, but it's not a huge problem, right? So we refuge out, and then my Chosen get to activate. They're getting a press forward. I've got the leader that's just uh, standing up and walking out of the way because he didn't get to... uh, Rise. Right. He doesn't do rise or anything. He just gets. He just stands up because he was knocked down. So now we're trying to manufacture a charge on Osram, and this is good or bad. I think uh, the way that I'm looking at it is, I'm going to take a free strike from a driller. Hope maybe I can survive. Uh, I don't. I barely don't survive. You ended up doing one more damage than yeah it than it would have taken to kill me. So I had a chance. My hope here was to go in, charge Osram, get some damage on him, and then repo out of the way. And I'd take a free strike from Osram, but I really don't care because I just wanted to get the damage in there. So that didn't quite pan out, but it's okay. I can, I'm can. i moving on from it. Next up, we get the Archangel to go up and put in the anim- put the Animus out. I'm not moving the model because it just... Uh, I think it fell down once while the camera was in its corrupted status. So, like, yeah. so I was just like, we're going to leave it here. So I start throwing dice. I'm looking for boosted 12s to connect with Ostrom. So the the I need above average here. But the way that I looked at it with Proteus not being able to do anything this turn, I didn't really feel like I could get enough work out of the Archangel into the Drillers to start killing them. So uh, I just really went hard on this uh, Ostrom assassination thing. I light him on fire, maybe do a couple damage with a blast, which I think we're measuring out right now. Uh, this one, oh, no, you're this is a your blast did no damage on him because you didn't boost because you opted yep. to boost the final shot to hit. Exactly. So this drifts over to the mortar and breaks the mortar. So you have to take a, a doofus or no, it doesn't break, break the mortar, but it does start it on fire. So that's good for me. Uh, I run a spell martyr over to the zone to contest because I do need to start being mindful of scenario stuff. And uh, unfortunately, I just have to pass the turn with the way that worked out. Yeah, Osram surviving was really, it was coin flip. Like, if he hits that 12 and then he boosts damage with a power 16, dice minus 1, like... Yeah, there's a good chance you go down, and if you don't, then the fire damage could do something, but here we just see I roll uh, Snake Eyes anyways, so... And because he is within animus range, so fire cannot go out, so it would be an auto-hitting pal 14, dice minus 3, so it actually does do 3 damage to Osram. It's the driller in front that didn't take any damage. He's been on fire the whole game. Yep. Now, I think the better play here would would have been to just have the Archangel go up and start taking out drillers uh, between him and the Carnivian. Because I think the Carnivian kills one driller. The Archangel probably kills the other two. So maybe I just didn't have my attrition goggles on and was really like kind of jaded by the fact that Proteus couldn't do anything. Yeah, because I think... 
Once Proteus frenzied, you got it in your head that the Archangel couldn't kill two drillers, and you forgot that they, yeah, they arbitrarily <laughs> buffed him the POW-21. <laughs> 21, like, 21, I remember when this thing was like, what, 17? Yeah, uh, isn't that fun? <laughs> like, oh, your dice plus two on my drillers? Yeah, if I would have remembered that, I'd be like, yeah, six attacks at dice plus two, that, sh- that could kill two drillers. I mean, he has three initials, too. So Yeah, three like, initials, so it's even worse. Ugh. Yep. So that, that so good. the attrition play was infinitely better that run around, and now I have to try and just exist through this turn. I I got away with the with the archangel living once. Can I do it again? And now this time I got two fully loaded drillers in his face, ready to go. So I do allocate out four focus or three this time. So I give two to one driller, one to another, because Bam Fist is going to load the other one. I upkeep fire for effect because now I'm going to be trying to run away and camp. We so, did have the driller on the bottom to come and try and deal with the Hellmouth down there and took a free strike, but uh, couldn't come up and seal the deal on that Hellmouth. So that is still a really dangerous contesting. He piece. physically couldn't get there walking oh, yeah, four, so he right. walked four, yep. repoed three. So you're just there for the next turn. It is top of four, and I am finally engaging <laughs> a Hellmouth in melee with a jack out of control. So here I'm starting. Uh, what am I starting with? I thought I just did an attack. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what. You might have been shooting with a gun bunny or something. I'm not sure. So now the drillers are going up. Dice minus one. Clamp misses. So now dice minus one does three. Buys an attack. Dice minus one does three. So like now I'm like, well, this isn't looking good. Go, go, gadget, driller. Meanwhile, I'm happy because the low numbers look good for me. And then that was the clamp. Now the drill auto hits. Dice minus one does five. Dice minus one does two. Yep, so I'm, like, getting, I'm getting real excited here. Ugh, like dice minus one does five. Like, man, those drillers rolled absolute crap. Yep, so I'm alive on five boxes, but that stupid mortar is still here. And now this time with Desperate Pace, and I don't need Desperate Pace to get there because I can walk three inches, get base to base with the obstruction, and be within... 13, which is the flying high threat of a mortar. Yep, and we don't play the obstructions that as though they block line of sight to 120s, so you can see over this rock no problem. So on five dice, rips them off. Yep. So maybe I should have done the mortar first. It's just like I have drillers that are in melee, like just, just punch it to death. Driller's going to drill. <laughs> and they, they don't. <laughs> so I believe that was a gun bunny shooting the Forsaken out of the zone. Next one goes to shoot the Carnivian does a couple points yep and i think that proxy base i don't know if we missed when we were trying to line all this up but you're trying to figure out how can you actually get your basher into the carnivian and we figured that because because slams are a little wonky and you have to go directly towards them you were going to hook across across that obstruction and not be able to make it so you got to figure you got to manufacture a charge now yep because bashers can slam for free so like i was hoping to crush slam for free for a pow 17 slam Maybe hit that obstruction for a four, for a three dice damage slam. Buy an attack with crush. So I end up having to do the Jack Marshall thing to let me charge for free and plus two to hit, and then he rolls kind of poopy. Yeah, the Carnivian sitting pretty spiffy. I think he only took like six damage or something or five damage. It wasn't real good. And the Carnivian's already shown that he can one round a dwarf heavy. So like now I feel like I've just thrown the Basher away for nothing. And with Refuge, like he can kill it and then Refuge into the zone. He doesn't even need to kill it. He just needs to hit it. And then you get to walk as refuge. You just need to hit. So there, I'm checking to see if one of the bunnies is engaged. He backs up, sprays Proteus, just because he's got nothing better to do. Dice minus eight, no damage. And then flip it to him. Now I'm up to f- three points. So with even being at three points, I really need to focus on how to not lose this game on scenario. And that means that I need to try and manufacture a heavy into Ethan's top zone. Uh, and the best way to do that was is with the Carnivian, really. So uh, I end up putting out another tentacle. And this time I'm putting it in a place where like the, the driller has to deal with it. I know that he's going to go after the, the, the Hellmouth instead of the, the tentacle, but it just seemed like a good idea to put it there anyways. So... Um, the uh i also like in hindsight probably could have been putting some damage in on the objective to try and s- slip this a little bit but at pow 10 dice off eight i'd be fishing real hard i mean you could keep pooping them out for charges yeah, yeah. but if they're going there they wouldn't have been blocking 
the driller. Exactly. So I, I think we're doing okay with this. The Hellmouth for no points is doing very much its job in holding down a zone for four turns in a row. Yep, that's so, what free Hellmouths do. Yeah, it's I fucking just fucking hate them it's so much. It's so hard to to give up this theme with with just that benefit. Plus the chosen, as we've seen, they they are a really like small package that just does what they want to do by themselves. If you were to try and buff them up at all, like if I put Dra Dragon's Blood on them, they're just amazing. So. Um, I believe what I'm doing right now is uh, I, I unpacked Absalonia here. Forsaken. Or Forsaken, sorry. I just saw I was buying Focus or buying Fury. So the Forsaken was trying to go up and put some damage on the Basher. I was like, ah, I'm dice off seven. Maybe I could do some work with boosts. And I like, I barely scratched the pain on this thing. Like the Forsaken just really let me down here. Um, but what can you do? I, it was just some POW 12 attacks and it could have gone... It could have gone good for it because I, I I would have liked to have put a bunch of damage on this thing, but unfortunately it just didn't come out that way. Because I was thinking maybe I could get the Forsaken up to Osram and do a Blight Bomb on him or a Blight Spasm, whatever you want to call it, uh, but that didn't work out. So now this is where I get to go crazy, and I do sp my Spontaneous Mutation for both Flight and uh, Strength. That gets me to this Driller with no problems, and I'm charging in at POW 15, so I'm dice off four on all of these. And uh, Absalonia just isn't putting up great numbers for for her attacks with the boost. She's hitting all right, but um, she's just at least that that was a good sh a good shot. But the rest of these are kind of going rough. We end up missing one of those attacks, and we just keep boosting damage to put some work in. The final one cracks it for a bunch, but unfortunately doesn't take out its cortex, which is what I really wanted to do with it. Or you what left I column one full column six full and one box in the cortex so he had nine boxes left with his arms up and his cortex what i was really hoping to do was just kill it and then i do a free strike here with the driller that you left combat with yeah dice, without you sorry go ahead dice minus two does actually 10 but to the wrong column so i leave his mind on one box yep so we're proteus is sitting pretty good here you take your bashes and they end up coming up real short because they're like dice off 10 or something like that dice off of 12. 14 oh, with 14. unyielding i was just hoping yeah. to do one point to his mind and maybe make him hit on miss on one dice Yep, so he goes up and starts bashing into the driller. And this way, I'm trying. Th what I'm trying to do here is just get rid of the threats that are going to get into Absalonia because we, we ended up doing a lot of work to one of the drillers, so it meant that uh, Proteus didn't have a lot to do into it. Um, I think it took an ended up taking two attacks to get it down, but then Proteus ends up killing the other driller. So if I just would have had this to happen with the Archangel first in those previous turns, I would have really shifted the scales in this game and made it so that Ethan would have a really hard time coming back from it. But now Absaloni is sitting on no camp, and uh, but she is sitting behind a, 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 a cloud, so she's a little bit protected there. And she's only got two damage on her, so it's not a huge deal there either. My Carnivian goes up and starts buying attacks into this basher, and again, he's like trying his hardest to not come up short. Uh, by rolling like exactly what he needs to hit and then blowing up his damage rolls but it does end up taking a decent amount i think it took his initials and two two additionals to get there because he missed his second claw so he didn't get his chain attack yep so we do get to go into the zone and pass it over for a decent contesting piece so this is kind of like worst case scenario for me like i'm up on scenario but his heavies are closing in i have no heavies left because his trivially won round me Fire does not go out on Osram. Fire does not go out on the Mortar, so the Mortar has to kill a dude uh, with uh, Take Up. I think the damage that happened to Osram you just shook with Focus, maybe? Yep, because I had one left over from last turn. I had two left over. So now like, I need to kill a Abby, but there's a cloud in the way of the Mortar, so the Mortar can't see, and then you forgot to activate a Chosen. Yeah, so we wrap this back because uh, I, was, I didn't try to use any information that Ethan had this turn to figure this out but i was like well the chosen is just going to run to engage osram because that hand cannon could hurt and then plus like osram is now engaged and can't run away yeah so i do the easy stuff driller goes into the hellmouth does three damage you know pretty good stuff like yeah maybe three more fucking turns and they'll <laughs> kill it except this is top of five now so i doubt i'll ever get to score that zone and the bottom driller or, or the driller in the forest he's within four of the objective but like this is such a hard scenario for Ostrom, like in Hammer Strike. We'll talk a little bit more about it afterwards. But like he's just not good at spreading out. So 
I think here you're shooting into Proteus a bunch just to try and get some extra damage into him and then catch Absalonia in the process. Yep. So the spray bunnies are out of control, <clears throat> but they can aim. One of them is able to clip her at dice minus five and do a couple points of damage. And then see that driller measuring within four. So he came and walked to get melee threat, but now he can walk repo into the zone. So maybe next turn I'll have, not next turn, but in two turns I'll have two drillers out of control on a Hellmouth. Like, Woo, but here's where we get super cute. Bamfist is within eight of Abby. So that means he can walk five, get within three, and use an ability I've never had the opportunity to use, Tectonic Shift. And if you don't know what that is, that's probably a good reason. It's a star action. Choose a table edge. Enemy miles currently within three inches of this model are pushed three inches directly towards the chosen edge in the order you choose. So I picked the left edge, so which pushed Abby towing into the cloud. Yep, so now things can start seeing her, and she's still mill camp, so that's still real dangerous. So now the... Uh, I think your gunner went up and shot and then missed Absalonia, but started Proteus on fire. Yep, so there now we're seeing if the mortar can aim and see Abby around the built obstruction. And then we do end up figuring out that there is a line. So now the fire for effect mortar can aim and pop a shot at Abby. And here's where you point out to me that you know... You're like, you know, with playing God, I can transfer to Proteus once for free. And I was like, well, I didn't know that, but I still got to try and kill her anyway. Yeah, I didn't want to pull a gotcha by saying, by letting you go through a bunch of stuff, shoot your gun bunnies somewhere else, and then pull the mortar into her. I just felt like that wasn't a good way to leave the game. So I just said, here's the deal, because not many people remember that. I didn't remember, but literally every single attack I have in my army has to go into her. And it blew up damage on four dice and left Proteus on two. Yep, so it didn't kill him, so I still got him at least, but that's still a big blow to Proteus. But it is a free transfer that Absalonia doesn't have to eat. So now I'm measuring out some Ostrom stuff. Ostrom takes a free strike. It hits. Oh, with damage, he does five, which I, after mathing out, I negate just so I don't have extra damage. Because I have four focus, so I boost the hand cannon into Abby. I hit. I boost damage at dice minus three. I do four. Or I do five. But now I cast Unstoppable Force, which allows the gun bunny. And here we push him wrong. I We end up switching where he's getting pushed. So I have the gun bunny loop around in front and push him forward. And then now he's no longer engaged because the Carnivian only has one inch melee. And then he boosts a shot, powerful shots a shot in the Abbey and puts her down. So, like, that was my Hail Mary of Hail Marys. And, I, like, otherwise, like, I don't, I don't, there was no way I was coming back. So that Bamfist play was, was pretty clutch there. It was nice to see an ability like that play out well. Because, yeah, normally it, it never gets used because nobody's ever within that close where I wouldn't rather just empower. Yeah, he's your empower bot, so you don't play him far forward. Or give, like, force barrier or, like, he's got... Literally gotta... anything else. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's not a great ability, and this will probably literally be the only time I ever cast it, but, hey, when it comes up, it helps you maybe kill a caster. Yep, there's, there are definitely some things that I could have done in this game differently. Like, if I had recognized that the Archangel had the increased POW over its old version, then I probably would have been able to go into those drillers and take them out and change the, the pace of the game extremely, because then it's just pushing Osram into really bullied spots, and you'll never get your other drillers back, so you can sit there and screw around in that bottom zone, because I've got the rest of the table on lockdown. But because I decided to get my opinion on where the game was going tainted by not having access to Proteus that turn, I ended up putting myself in a position where I was putting my whole game on boosted 12s. So uh, I think that the Absalonia list is really fun. I think that it definitely has some like some girth in the game. You know, like it's it's not a it's not a fun list. I'd say that it's not a heavily competitive list because grievous wounds will kind of jerk it around but it is still good as long as it's dodging that that one thing yeah and like with 120s being immune to grievous wounds now you just gotta really look out for like mortality or entropic aura or tropic force or dragon's breath rockets yeah or them well i mean that's crucible garden fuck them yeah so um the other thing though about this awesome game is it really showcased that 
Um, even when Ostrom's kind of down and backed into a corner, as long as you leave these gun bunnies up and around and some of those techie pieces like Bam Fist, there's always something that he can do to try and unravel the, the game when he's when he's backed into that cor- corner, right? Yeah, but this was like a Hail Mary. This wasn't like super like tactical play. This was literally just throwing everything I had left in the Abbey and hoping it brought her down because you left her on no camp. Yeah, and I probably if she was camping one, like I lose. I probably could have quit while I was ahead with that with the uh, the driller. I just wanted to live the dream of a a fully roided out Absalonia killing a heavy. Like that was my my hope here. Um, I had a feeling that she wasn't going to exist much further, but uh, I probably could have just played a little bit more uh, conservatively and then used Proteus because Proteus only went, it only took him two Fury to kill those pieces. So if I would have just played a little bit more cautiously with Absalonia and not used my full stack to buy on there, there's a good chance that Proteus just kills those two and she can camp uh, maybe two or three Fury and then have the, the Carnivian and Proteus's transfer targets. Yeah, and at that point, I just kind of lose. Yeah, then it's just me pushing you further into the back of the board, and then your scenario lead doesn't really matter so much because eventually I'll just be able to start uh, double scoring the zone. Yeah, and like this is such a hard scenario for ha- Ostrom a hammer strike because he is focused twelve. This like the scenario was just a shooting gallery where like if I moved him up the middle of the board, like there's nowhere for him to hide. And, like, it's just making a wall of jacks in front of him. And that's, like, I need my jacks to do stuff. And he's just so focus-strapped. Like, upkeeping fire for effect or and snipe or even, like, having the recast fire for effect meant I can only allocate two to three focus and then still sit naked. Like, it's just... There's a lot of stuff he wants to do with his spell list and just not enough focus to do it, which is the story of like 90% of Merc casters. Yeah, it was one of the things that we had mentioned about, during the game at least, about Irregulars and its pro, 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 uh, its relevance, right, in, uh, in, in the Mercenary-like tool belt. One of the reasons why I think I was able to have a little bit more flexibility in this in this scenario, even though it didn't really come up a whole lot, was first of all, the Hellmouths are extremely flexible. They're not doing anything pulling things in, so I only need to put them in scenario-relevant places. But having my Blight Archon just able to kind of run around as this really durable piece and uh, be able to go to either zone, whichever one it needed to go to. Like, if you don't end up committing a lot to that bottom zone like you did, that's kind of where the Blight Archon could go. The Rake was down there for a real long time, and uh, that could have just turned into a really unfortunate situation if something were to collapse down there. So with Irregulars, as opposed to this Hammer Strike thing, the only module you get in this list that can do something like that is the Thor and Basher package, whereas with any other Irregulars list, you've got Nemo with a Toro, Gatsby with a Stalker or a Conservator, whatever you want to put on it. And those guys do work. Whereas, like, um, what you've got in Hammer Strike, it's just like, I need to brick within my 12 inch control area and hope that there's no scenario loss on the sides because most of Ostrom's power is in his ability to, main- to maintain a really good battle group. And those mortars are not going to be the pieces that are getting up into the middle of the table on those side zones. Yep. And then, like you said, it just it helps the focus burden. And then, like, I can cut back on heavies. Like, did I need five drillers? No. But, like, in Hammer Strike, what else am I going to spend points on? I personally, people can tell me if they have different opinions. Like, I don't like Hammer Dwarves. Like, they're speed four, and everyone's like, oh, Ostra makes them speed seven. Like, that's really cute for one turn. And then they're back to speed four power 12 up masters like i think maybe i just got spoiled by playing in rets with sentinels who are speed 5 power 12 up masters who have vengeance like if dwarves had vengeance or like their new ua character if they totally unfuck him from the pre-sid spoilers they have of his rules like if they make him actually good maybe i'll like i'll come back to it but they're stupid like the full advance plus two speed on a melee unit that can't run with the ability then is just why yeah it's it's strange i think that there's the rulic everything all the dwarves has a special place in a lot of players hearts but they're already kind of in this weird spot ostrom seems to be the only one that can play in the theme well because gorton just really likes playing irregulars because the the rulic kit 
doesn't really like he can't leverage it with what he brings to the table and Durgan is just like that caster might as well not exist as bad as his rules are I like you know I haven't tried making a Durgan list before this game but that's just like you take an earthbreaker and then like okay it's just like Ostrom is reliable and you know what he can do and when you only have three casters that can play in this one theme and one of them doesn't want to at all and even Mad Hammer doesn't want to. He'd rather have a regulars for more AOEs or for, Fortune, Steel of Fortune, Soldiers of Fortune. Soldiers of Fortune, yeah, that's the little head one. Yeah, like he'd rather play in there even over Hammer Strike. And even then, like we talked about Ostrom, like I'd probably, ra- I love Ostrom Hammer Strike. Like I went into a game store, I was like, sell me Ostrom Hammer Strike before uh, pre COVID. So, like, God. Almost 11 months ago now, I bought a full Ostrom <laughs> army because I was so excited to play it. And then, like, COVID happened, and I've just lost the I will. Mean, you can still do... I, I know that you begrudge the Hammer Dwarves, but they're still fun, and you can do a lot with them. But that's kind of like the overarching theme of all Rulik stuff. It's fun, not good. Like, the the there's so much of their catalog that is so far behind. Like, high shields are just trash. I got three units of them, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Hey, those range 10, POW 10, RAT 5, CR8. The sh- pa- arm 14 shield wall guys? Yeah. Hey, man, getting, every I'm shield getting, wall model is arm 14. I'm getting uh, flashbacks to uh, the best, worst unit in Kador, yeah. the, the assault commandos. But then on top of that, then you get weird things that are like supposed to have really specific functions in the in the list, like Hernan John or Gudrun. Or uh, what's another one of the weird ones in in the tact? The yeah, ta- the the tact. The, 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 the tactical. The Arcanists are guys. just like AD away from being like okay, but they're a speed four cloud wall unit that doesn't AD. Like they can't get in front of the army to actually leverage clouds. Yeah, and their clouds don't do anything. Like they just don't. I just wish they had AD, but like I I want to like Hammer Strike. I love it. Like it it was one of the themes that got me into Mercs. And then, like, Flames and Strange Bedfellows came out. Yep, that's the thing, though, is it the the Rulik stuff, the Dwarf stuff, Hammer Strike, they all have this really attractive factor to them. And it's not to say that you can't play the, the theme or play these pieces. It's just that it's really difficult to do it in a way that it all functions well together. And Osram being the, the, the one of the top generalists seems to be the one to run it the best, but when you pull him into any other theme, it just is hands down better. It's just Ostrom is the ultimate turd polisher for Rulik stuff. That's why Rulik stuff being, like, okay, and, like, their jacks are very, very cheap, but they're speed four, and, of course, like, well, of course they're speed four. Ostrom exists. But then, like, you try and look at drillers outside Ostrom, and it's just like, man, these aren't good. It's, It's real tough. Um... I don't, like I said, I don't want to begrudge Rulik stuff a bunch because I do really like a lot that they pull to the table, but it's just, it's so tough to to get them to work in a competitive environment. And it's not that you all, like everything needs to be competitive. It just needs to be like takeable and applicable to a game, right? And I know that like Privateer Press has always said not everything can be competitive, but everything should function. And some of this just doesn't function. Yeah. And, like, Mercs has already gotten enough SIDS at this point, so, like, I expect no Rulik updates for a long time. Like, I'll still play my Rulik stuff. It's just now, like, I feel like once I play Ostrom and in regulars, and I, like, we talked about, like, my driller's threatening 13 inches now, like, until they nerf Gatsby, like, now all of a sudden that's a 15-inch threat or 13 inches without Energizer. So now I can actually allocate to extra focus, and yep. it's just... We'll have to see what the dynamic updates are. Like, they they hinted about nerfs and like everyone's like oh i wonder if it's a caster that has a spell that rhymes with befuddle oh wait it's befuddle it better be fiona and i'm like gas before is probably on the block but they all talked about minor tweaks yeah it's 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 weird like i'm I'm super excited for that dynamic update that's going to happen but i feel like i might get let down because i'm expecting too much from it like whether you want to believe it or not infernals are a problem in the game like we we kind of got this, uh, and this is maybe another tangent that I'm going on. This that we feels don't have like to it, go on this it. is going to be hot. Like, but here's the here's the deal. Like infernals, they don't seem to be on the tip of everyone's tongue right now, and it, it's it's one of the like unfortunate 
slash fortunate things that happen because of pandemic. Because I think if we were having tons of events out there that weren't just online, then we would realize that infernals are still a really huge problem because they're just their their rules are just insane insane their masters are too good so like since we've had a real big drop in play of any game out there we aren't seeing a lot of infernal action i think like if ethan walked into my house one day and i was like hey ethan you're gonna play against this pairing of omodemos and agathon or zadaroth and omodemos or whatever any pick any two three two of the three masters he would literally get back into his car, drive 45 minutes back to Nasita, and tell me to go sit on one of my Infernal Masters. That's actually an hour drive, but... Sure, but you would do it. No, I'd play the game just because I drove out here. I'd bitch the whole time. Like, yeah. playing in the Agathon is just like, well, how long do I get to play until you just feed and kill my caster? And that like, is one of the reasons why we haven't had Agathon on the channel, and maybe it might be something good to throw out there so people can see it, but if you do not bring a caster that is spell warded you are 100 percent in a bad matchup yep because she will if she and even if you do bring like a spell warded caster like if you don't have a spell warded army they're just gonna helm out the shit out of you yeah she can throw out like three at least two two sure so essence nine can go up to essence 10 with hermit because hermit's stupid fucking rule that lets the masters go above their essence stat but then they've got she's got the feet that'll crank the damage on them too like they're just i think that um the infernal masters should i would love to see them get addressed in this dynamic update but since they're i i don't feel like they're going to do it just because they're going to say something like it hasn't had enough time in the wild yet but honestly i feel like infernals are a problem and, like, that could be a whole side tangent. I feel like we have gone off tangent from our game out of nowhere. I know, I know, I know. You I just was like, talking about Irregulars and Gatsby, and then I was just like, let's talk about all the stuff that's bad in the game so people come and keep playing and love it. Yeah. Because <laughs> what? Yeah, cause we've, I think we've talked about Infernals before. There's a lot of changes that yeah. need to happen. And it's but not, won't. I'm not trying to begrudge the game. I just think that the more you care about something, the more you're likely to complain about the things that don't work because you would like it to work completely and fully. Um, outside of that, Absalonia 1 was fun. The Archangel is a blast. And Proteus is so cool, especially with a points drop, I believe, after the CID hit. And the Carnivian feels really good. Like, the Legion CID was phenomenal, and I'm so hoping that the troll one just doesn't fall flat. Archangel, best Garg, 2020. I don't disagree with that. 